Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity feels like it exists as an in-between state. Not quite a Dynasty Warriors game, but not quite Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, either. The more I've thought about the game's mechanics and organization, it's occurred to me that it serves as a useful metaphor for cognition. Age of Calamity is akin to an information processing view of cognition. It relies on players recalling specific button combinations at specific times based on schematic understanding of how enemy characters react to player behavior. This stands in contrast to the more situated, open-ended, and inquiry-driven mechanics and organization of Breath of the Wild. In that game, players are oriented toward experimentation with the environment. Although there are rules that constrain gameplay, much like there are physical properties of the universe that constrain human perception and action, players can carve an individualized trajectory through the game without relying on symbolic or memorized patterns of information. Age of Calamity is very much a didactic game. It tells the player where to go, what to do, and more or less how to play through traditional direct instruction. Tutorials are short and center on specific button combinations or tasks that are modeled after those featured in Breath of the Wild. Rather than presenting open-ended problems across the game's environments and missions, technical gameplay elements rely on many different characters with different abilities to generate variety. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity has a 78 out of 100 on Metacritic, with most major game reviewers, including Destructoid, Nintendo Life, Games Radar, and Game Informer, rating it between 70 and 90. There are a few lower ratings in the 60s, GameSpot being of note, but by and large, the game was received as somewhere between fine and good. The weakest links are dips in frame rate during multiplayer, uneven storytelling, and repetitive mechanics. Where the game shines is in creating a convincing Dynasty Warriors version of Breath of the Wild's Hyrule. The visuals capture the world they're meant to capture. The game includes multiple explicit behavioral reinforcement systems, including currency and item gathering, extra rewards for completing missions with extra time left or enemies defeated, unlockable costumes, tools like a flurry attack that become available upon successfully executing a dodge, collective Koroks, and the ability to dye one's clothes. Who doesn't love a little flair? As previously noted, there's a significant amount of direct instruction baked into the design. Players are not encouraged to explore, inquire, or discover so much as they're nudged to press the right button at the right time to do the necessary action. What little exploration is built into the game is mostly centered on finding hidden items, serving as an incentive for replay. There are opportunities for social learning by virtue of the game's two-player mode, but it's not explicitly built around social constructivist goals, mostly approaching socialization as an afterthought. It's not really built to move conversation forward in the Legend of Zelda community of practice. The narrative is about team building to save the world from incredible nightmarish peril, so it's got that going for it, which is nice. Generally speaking, the game rewards mission success with additional story and opportunities for character upgrades. It also awards currency at the end of each mission depending on the player's performance. Better performance, as determined through playtime, enemies defeated, and difficulty level yields better rewards. There are multiple difficulty levels, but they can be changed at any time and don't have a meaningful impact on the game's overall structure or mechanics. In very hard difficulty, play becomes an exercise in recognizing enemy behaviors or else facing extremely punishing consequences. This is similar to the Dark Souls series, though the controller responsiveness for Hyrule Warriors doesn't quite match the precision of something like Dark Souls. During combat, the game assesses player knowledge and responsiveness to particular patterns and symbols by organizing mission challenges around particular chains of events. So for instance, you'd fight enemies to open a fort gate, defeat the enemies in that fort to summon the boss, and then defeat the boss to take control of the fort. Combat also involves enemies attacking with particular strategies that map to the player character's Sheikah Slate abilities. Bombs, Ice Blocks, Time Stop, and Magnesis. There are also boss characters that demand sophisticated knowledge, symbol recognition reaction time, and mechanical skill based on interactions presented throughout the preceding level. As a result, Age of Calamity is built sort of like a traditional classroom environment. There are stages of difficulty and challenges that reward memory more than inquiry. 
Unlike Breath of the Wild's puzzle dungeons, Calamity encourages a very specific kind of play by rewarding it, and the challenges it presents are much more well than ill-defined. Age of Calamity doesn't have the content that matches any standard K-12 curriculum, so the narrative isn't well designed to align with any particular academic content objective. On the flip side, the game is a nice example of multimedia storytelling, and it conveys new and different narratives through different mechanics than Breath of the Wild. It could be useful in deconstructing tutorial systems and user interfaces, particularly the map, the mission, the upgrade systems. They're not particularly user-friendly or obviously navigable, especially not compared to the other Hyrule Warriors games. At least there's this cute robot that sounds like R2-D2. There's no deeply philosophical takeaway designed into Age of Calamity or its story, but it speaks to a kind of interdisciplinary genre bending within the realm of game design that designers should be encouraged to explore. This is similar to Cadence of Hyrule's Zelda bending, as well as the reimagining of Link's Awakening from the Nintendo Game Boy to the Switch. Calamity is primarily an opportunity to romp in Breath of the Wild's Hyrule one more time before we get the Breath of the Wild sequel. It's another entry in a catalog of transmedia storytelling experiences that each reveal a little bit more about the Hyrulean story world that we all love. It's clear the designers wanted to make the game accessible to multiple audiences while incorporating as many elements of Breath of the Wild into the game as they could. Unlike Breath of the Wild, though, Age of Calamity doesn't have the breadth of scope to allow freeform exploration and experimentation. It's not a criticism, but it recognizes that the game is meant to be something uniquely positioned between an open-world Legend of Zelda game and a traditional Dynasty Warriors mass sword-swiping beat-em-up type experience. The game works in the sense that it does what it sets out to do. It's not Breath of the Wild, and that's okay. The two experiences achieve their goals differently for important reasons, and they both tap into the aesthetics of Breath of the Wild even though their approaches to instruction and assessment are quite different. In sum, the game is an earnest effort to replicate as much of Breath of the Wild as possible within the constraints of the Dynasty Warriors format. It would be great to have exploration and inquiry built in from the very start rather than offering a sort of training ground hours into the game. Like, it should be possible to construct the narrative, or at least the introductory narrative, around an open-ended exploration of the mostly familiar territory of Hyrule. If the world behaved as physically interactive as the original Breath of the Wild, there would also be a means to engage the player as part of the game's ecosystem rather than just treating them as sort of an empty vessel waiting to be filled with button combinations. Even with its relative limitations, Calamity does a nice job showcasing how an information processing pattern and simple-oriented approach to design can be engaging and effective for teaching players how to play, so long as the overarching rule set is well-defined and internally consistent. It just won't, you know, probably lead to transfer. But that's not Zelda's job, you know? <laughs>